There are three types of marginal zone lymphoma. These are the nodal subtype, the splenic subtype, and the extranodal subtype. The extranodal subtype is also called mucosa-associated lymphoid tumor or MALT and can present in various organs such as the conjunctiva or stomach. Each of these subtypes has its own pathophysiology and sometimes even etiology, and it's important to make a distinction between those. In addition, the responses to treatment may actually be different. One of the important things to know is that splenic marginal zone lymphoma is highly associated regionally uh, in different parts of the world with hepatitis C. And many years ago, it was elegantly demonstrated that treating and eradicating hepatitis C eliminates not only the hepatitis C, but also the lymphoma permanently. So it's always important to test patients for hepatitis C. Another subtype, for example, gastric marginal zone lymphoma of associated lymphoid type, known as gastric malt, can be associated with another infectious organism called Helicobacter pylori. So patients have to be tested for Helicobacter pylori when they have gastric malt. And if they have gastric malt that has H. pylori in it, a two-week course of antibiotics typically eliminates both the infection and the lymphoma. So these are two of the most common examples of infection-related lymphoma and are pretty much unique to marginal zone lymphoma. Marginal zone lymphoma does appear at times like other indolent lymphomas. Because there are the three different subtypes, it can be different. For example, the gastric marginal zone lymphoma is pretty unique compared to follicular lymphoma. Um, also, the conjunctival subtype presenting as stage one disease and easily treatable with local therapies is very different. One of the most important things that distinguishes follicular lymphoma from marginal zone lymphoma is that follicular lymphoma almost is always disseminated. So stage one disease is a relatively rare occurrence. Uh, and with modern imaging, such as PET scan, patients we thought had stage one disease, follicular lymphoma really don't. Uh, however, because of the pathophysiology of marginal zone lymphoma, particularly the ones associated with infection, a stage one disease is relatively common. So. You might have a patient who has an isolated lung lesion, and whether it's resected or not, they may not develop disseminated disease for quite a long time. One of the interesting aspects of marginal zone lymphoma is that it is associated with autoimmune diseases. And these can be Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Sjogren's syndrome most commonly. Um, for example, someone who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis may develop marginal zone lymphoma in the thyroid. Similarly, someone who has Sjogren's syndrome may develop marginal zone lymphoma in the parotid gland. The assumption is that the autoimmune disease creates a milieu that invites the development of lymphoma pretty much through dysregulation of the normal B cell development pathway. In addition, the treatments for autoimmune disease, if they are immune modulatory, can leave a patient susceptible to the development of lymphomas.